All right, now the VCF section. There are two filters here. We already know VCF1 receives its input from the mix section, but of course this can be changed with the input here. This is a cutoff tile. And as you can tell, this is a low pass filter, specifically a four pole low pass filter. We can add resonance from here. And just like a typical analog synth, you get that screaming self oscillation. Lower resonance values can avoid the self oscillation, but still sound very analog. This filter has a lot of character. We'll bring down the gain with this dial and try to just have the self oscillation of the filter. But the problem with this is that no matter what key I press, it sounds the same. So to address that, there's a key follow dial here that will scale the cutoff amount based on the incoming MIDI note. And now the keyboard works. But of course, we don't really know what pitch is being generated with each key. I don't have perfect pitch, so I definitely can't tell that. So what I'll do is I'll bring up VCA2 so we can hear VCA2 and compare this self-oscillating filters pitch with that. Maybe an octave above or two octaves above. Now it's just a matter of finding the correct pitch. That seems to be close enough. So now we have a nice sine wave type sound. Okay, now if the gain dial is increased, we actually get some nice analog style distortion. So let's try that out. With high gain values, the filter won't really self-oscillate, even at high resonance values, which is a pretty common thing in analog sense. That's a pretty thick sound, a lot of that analog goodness. Okay, next we have these two modulation dials. Both will modulate the cutoff frequency. This one is via ADSR2. And this one is via LFO2. Let me speed up that LFO a bit. So pretty cool that we can have both at the same time. Both these sources can also be changed by plugging in alternate control signals in these inputs. Now the filter is currently in a low pass 24 dB per octave mode, but there are three more modes that can be selected from here. One pole is a 6 dB per octave slope filter, kind of subtle. Two pole is 12 dB per octave. Three pole is 18 dB per octave. And of course four pole, which is a 24 dB per octave slope. Other than low pass, the filter also has a high pass output here, which can also be changed to a band pass or band reject mode. Now the default connection is from the low pass output to the VCA, but if you want to hear the high pass, we can just take its output from here and connect it directly to the VCA. So now we have a high pass filter. Let me just bring that key follow down. We can change that to a bandpass. Has a very formant-like tone. 
or the band reject. Pretty nifty options. We'll be exploring more of using these filter outputs in some more complex ways later on. For now, we'll move on to the VCF2 and see how that's different from VCF1.